Hi everyone, it's Helen here from Bodywork Pilates and today, 9th of December, would have been Joseph Pilates' birthday. Now over the years Pilates has changed, it's evolved. Some people still teach a very classical approach to the technique, as Joseph himself would have taught, and some people like ourselves have taken a more modern and therapeutic approach. The premise of both of those teachings though is the same, that our clients should be strong and stable and flexible and mobile. And that's the work that we as teachers thank Joseph Pilates for, that we can continue to pass on to you, our clients. Joseph was often quoted, had some great quotes, and one of his quotes was, you are as old as your spine is flexible. So if you think about it, it's very easy, isn't it, to start getting a little bit sticky around the spine and perhaps we don't move in all areas and all planes. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some simple exercises that will mobilise your spine in all different directions. Now, as always, if you need to seek medical advice first, then please do so. I'm going to keep these fairly simple. They're not going to be terribly involved, they're not going to be terribly weighty. But even so, if you have pain and it's exacerbated by any of these exercises, it's probably not for you and you need to find something else. But I'm hoping there'll be something within this little video that will work well for you. So initially, let's just start from seated. So I'm just sitting on my bench. You can do this sitting on a dining chair. You can do it sitting on the floor. But if you're sitting on a chair, make sure your feet are flat and you want to really get that sensation of being able to lift up. So anchor and place your pelvis down evenly and firmly. It's almost like you set your pelvis in stone. You want to slightly retract the chin just in order to take any forward thrust from the neck. And really think about lengthening up so we get this opposition going on where we press down in order to create and affect a reaction that lifts us up and out through the crown of the head. You may find immediately the slight tightening of those abdominals, okay, so that might work for you. Seated is quite a difficult and challenging position for a lot of people, particularly when we want to lift up out of the base of that spine. So using those abdominals a little bit, perhaps a lift of the pelvic floor, can really help to put a bit of stability there. We're breathing into our rib cage, we're not breathing down into our belly. And generally we breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the nose or the mouth. Okay. Gonna move into just a simple rotation, but let's just identify the movement of the neck first. So with the chin drawing in, simply turn your head from one side, center, and then the other. Super easy to do, but notice if you feel any restriction, one side to the other. Notice if there's any tension, any tightness, any grinding, popping, popping, banging. How does that feel? And of course, we're still trying to lengthen up. So we want to try and create a sense of space in those joints. And then bring it back to center. Now just allow the ear to come to the shoulder. Try not to lift the shoulder up to the ear and then bring it back to center and then the other side. And again, notice where you may feel a difference from one side to the other. Notice if you feel a little restricted, a little tight, are those neck muscles a little tight? Might be worth doing a little bit of stretching on that if that's the case. But we're just identifying a little bit of movement in the cervical spine, the neck. And so often we treat the neck like it's not part of the spine, that it's something entirely different. It is of course part of the spine. Just as important as anything else, that we keep it mobile, strong, well-placed. Bring it back to center. Okay, take the arms forward. The arms, the hands don't want to be just slightly lower than your shoulders. So the shoulders gently slide down, try not to jam them. Stay nice and tall, remember we're still settled heavily into the pelvis. You're just gonna pull your left elbow back. So the left side of your rib cage is going to draw back and the right side of your rib cage is going to move forward. And you can turn the head and look towards the elbow behind you and then bring it back to center and then change. Now, we want to keep those shoulders down and we want to keep the arms as if they were just resting on a shelf. The spine is still lifting. We've perhaps still got that slight corseting around the center of the body, but keeping the pelvis really still beneath you, just gently gliding those ribs around. It's like you're just trying to create a little bit of a twisting, rotation a little bit of a ringing out if you like keeping those shoulders down and again 
elongate, try to emphasize the length, the distance between the sitting bones and the crown of the head. This is a really nice exercise if you get a little tight around the upper back, we call this archer, and then bring it back to center. Good. Release that down, give those shoulders a bit of a shrug out. Surprise me how quickly your shoulders get heavy. All right, if you've ever done any work with me before, you'll know I absolutely love this next exercise. And you're gonna bring your fingertips just to the back of the head. Now we're not clasping the hands and we're not pushing the head forward. We've simply got the chin drawn in, we're still lengthening up. As we look forward, we can see the elbows just in the corner of our vision. And from here, keeping those ribs drawn in, we're just gonna ease the elbows back. And then the elbows come forward again. So if I turn side on, I'm up nice and tall. And all I'm doing is just gently gliding my shoulder blades towards the mid length, mid point of my spine, keeping my ribs in. So it's not about getting your elbows all the way back, pushing your head and pushing your ribs. Light touch the back of the head, lifting length from tail to crown of head, easing and getting that feeling of just sliding those shoulder blades towards each other. So you get this gliding action of the shoulder blades against the back of the ribs. And it may be, but for some of you, you have the range of movement that opens the chest and retracts the shoulders and the elbows maybe disappear out of your vision. But for some of you, they might not. And again, you may notice that one arm seems to move more freely than the other. All of these things are just the way we are and then bring it back to center. And again, give those shoulders a little shrug, just make sure we're relaxed. All right, we're gonna to need to come down onto the floor now. So grab your mat, grab a towel, grab whatever it is. Bring yourself down carefully to lie on your back. Okay, so I've laid myself down. I've got my feet and my knees aligned with my hip bones at the front edge of my body. Hands resting on the floor at the side of the body. Now my feet and my knees want to stay nice and stable. So at no point do I want to feel like I'm rolling onto the outside or the inside edges of my feet, which would roll my knees in and out. So try and keep a, a firm and even balance down through the feet. We've got a sense of slightly lifting up through the inner thigh and again, perhaps through pelvic floor. And we just want to just find a little bit of movement, a little bit of nudging and nodding through that low back. So imagine you've got a bowl of water resting on your belly, tip that pubic bone towards you, let that lower back press down to the floor, and then send your pubic bone forward. But what I don't want you to do is tip your bowl of water out through the front of the thighs. Just press the pubic bone forward so you feel an openness develop from the ribs to the hips, this feeling of pressing forward. And perhaps at that point, you feel those abdominals tighten again. So you pull and pull the bowl of water over the chest, and then just press the pubic bone forward, taking the bowl of water back to level, but with length at the front edge of the body. So we're just getting a little tiny nodding action from the pelvis. Again, we're keeping an even balance through the feet. We've got a little bit of energetic length down the arms. Back of the neck is long. If you need to put a little something behind the head at this point, you can do. Just do that a couple more times. We're just focusing on that lower back. Just on that lower back, good. And then bring it back to center, sending the pubic bone forward. And now walk your feet and your knees really close together, squeezing the inner thighs and the inner edge of the knee and the calf together, like you've got both feet in one shoe and both legs in one trouser leg. Move the arms a little bit wider away. You can take them much wider if you need to, but keep those feet tucked into one shoe and with your upper body nice and still, transfer the weight over onto the right side of your pelvis and then bring it back to center. I'm gonna take my legs over towards my left. Now you might notice that you'll see my top leg, my right leg is stacked entirely on top of my left leg. So my foot has come off the floor, which means my legs haven't slid against each other and then back to center. But I'm keeping my ribs and my upper body still. So this is the opposite of what we did a moment ago when we were seated, where we stabilized the pelvis and the lower body and we rotated the upper body. Now we've stabilized the upper body and we're rotating the lower body. So we're creating that little bit of rotation 
further down that spine, coming out of those lower ribs, and such as it is, a little bit of rotation around the lumbar spine. You have very limited rotation in the lumbar spine, so it's not really truly all coming from the lower back. So again, keeping those feet tucked into one shoe, keeping those legs stuffed down one trouser leg. Shoulders stay wide, relaxed, chest is released. And we're just moving from one side of the pelvis to the other. It's unlikely if you keep those lower ribs down that you're gonna get those knees anywhere near the floor. It's not about that. And then bring it back to center. Bring one knee into the chest and just hug that in. Let that back gently flatten, then release, change sides, bring it in, let that back flatten, release, and then bring yourselves carefully around onto your hands and knees. So do pad underneath the knees if you need to, but the hands are below the shoulders, the knees are below the hips. You want to have your wrist creases and your fingers for more or less facing forward. The shoulders are wide and drawn down. And once again, we're looking for that sense of opposition, that sense of length, where we reach the crown ahead forward and we want the pelvis, the tailbone, the sacrum pressing away, creating that easy curve of the low back and perhaps a little tightening of the abdominals. Now press firmly and energetically away from the floor through the arms and the legs and keep your upper body completely still. And all we're going to do here is nod that pelvis again. So pull the pubic bone towards you, just tucking your tail under and then releasing. And again, just tucking the tail under, but try not to move into the area behind your breastbone and around the shoulders. So often what happens is when people come to do mobility work in their spine, particularly if they're encouraged to do something like a cat stretch, they ignore the movement here and just push immediately into their upper back between the shoulder blades. I call that bison, because you just become really high up here and quite flat down here. So just get that feeling of nodding, nudging that pubic bone up towards the breastbone and then pressing it away to recreate the curves of the spine. Now, bring it back to here and now you're gonna wag your tail from side to side and again, we're not using the upper back as we do this. We're trying to keep that fairly stable. And we're just taking the pelvis like it's a little bell and just swinging it from side to side. So it's, it's a little hip hitch really. So you're bringing your hip up and then down and up and down. So it's a shortening into the waist, just wagging your bottom from side to side. And just notice as you do that, can you isolate that movement or are you moving everything? Try to isolate the movement if you can. Do that a few times. And then from here, put the two together. So wag the tail, tuck it under, wag the tail and around. So you're just scooping around into a circle, those shoulders are still drawing down, those abdominals are still lightly engaged, we're still breathing, don't forget to breathe, and then take it the other way. So we're creating this circular action, just to mobilize, not forcefulness, just to mobilize. Drawing a circle through the front of the pelvis, and then bring it back to center and come off the wrist. So through all of that, we sneakily, sneakily put a little bit of work and load down into the wrists as well. Okay, take a seat again. So again, whether you want to sit on your chair or whether you want to sit on the floor is absolutely fine. We're gonna do a simple side bend. So bring your right hand just behind the head. Again, we're not pushing on the head. Sit up nice and tall. We're back where we started from with a settled and set pelvis up as tall as possible, slightly drawn in chin. Other hand just comes down for the lightest support. We're certainly not leaning in that. Okay, as we breathe in, think about really opening up this right side, lifting into a side bend. So it's just like we're trying to tip the elbow up to the ceiling. I've got no weight into my supporting arm, it's just there in case. And then bring it back to center. So we're not changing the weight in the seat beneath us. 
we're adding no rotation. It's just as if you're between two panes of glass or you're between the elements of a hot toaster and you don't want to burn. So looking to open up that side. So the difference is we're not collapsing down into this shortening side, we're lifting into the lengthened side. And then bring it back to center, give that a little shake out, might make your arm go a little bit numb, so make sure you take the um, pressure out of that. And then change sides. So again, chin is drawn in, we're up nice and tall, we're anchoring down evenly through the pelvis, no rotation. And then as we inhale, we're looking to lift up and come over and then back to center. So we're really working the muscles at the side of the spine that bend us sideways. We don't have a huge amount of side bend, but we should try to hang on to what we've got. So all of these exercises that we've touched on today, all designed to keep the spine a little bit more mobile, maybe make you aware of where your tightnesses are so that you know where you need to put some emphasis. And hopefully, hopefully, they've been useful. And you can let me know whether having done these a few times, whether they've made a difference. Let's do one more of these. Still up nice and tall. And then release and give that shoulder a little shrug out. Just shrug those shoulders, turn the head a little bit and relax. So I hope that's been helpful. Do let me know what you think and I will speak to you again soon. Take care.